Good morning, this is Jason Dean coming live at you again for another Film Fanatic Bonanza. So, thanks again for people uh, checking out these videos and subscribing. It's been a lot of fun. I just finished kind of a series of three videos, all tied together in a lot of ways. Different, but tied together. I did two movies recently by the great William Castle. I did a video on the movie Mr. Sardonicus and also Homicidal. Both uh, of these wonderful gothic kind of horror exploitation movies that came out in 1961. And I did a big show on, on both of those videos. I tried to go in, in a little bit, I tried to go in depth about William Castle as a director and, you know, my my history with him as a director. Growing up, there were a lot of his films that were on cable. And there were, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, there were, like, um, you know, aside from, I was, you know, I, I was a product of VHS. That's how I, you know, ex was exposed to the horror world and the horror exploitation world and on and all things horror basically as far as films go and that also came with cable cable was was uh you know cable was very different back then but there used to be these series of these like late night kind of horror uh television shows of where they would run a bunch of horror movies and then they, they would be like a you know like a like on a Friday or Saturday night, they would start at like 10 o'clock and it would be like a horror marathon and they would show about six or seven movies back to back and they would go all night. And I remember as a kid watching these, you know, various different series that were on cable back then as a kid. And, uh, you know, it was super fun. And that's how I got exposed to all kinds of, that was one of the ways I got exposed to a lot of cool horror films when I was a kid. And But I remember, I definitely remember seeing uh, the first William Castle movie I saw was the, the House on Haunted Hill, starring Vincent Price. One of Vincent Price's most popular roles, a really great classic ghost story, all shot in black and white, really creepy, just an amazing atmosphere. And there were, a f you know, quite a few other movies that were shown on cable at that time from William Castle. Thirteen Ghosts was another one. And so I so I did a show where I tried to talk a lot about William Castle as a director and his impact on on horror and also in the horror kind of exploitation world, you know, more so in the uh, the films and the style of where the filmmaking was incredibly low budget, almost like a B movie quality, really influential, and his use of all, all of his films, because they were also, you know, products of the time period, like 50s. He even made movies in the 40s. I mean, it's it's kind of astounding how long of a career he had. But most of his films were, were all black and white. So they always had this amazing gothic kind of aesthetic behind them. And the reason that the way I got reintroduced to him was through a movie I just posted today I review I did recorded the video yesterday and I got a little bit sidetracked I was a little bit busy during the day and I didn't have time to post it but I recorded it yesterday and I posted it this morning and that was a movie Eyes of My Mother and I talked about how I saw some special features uh, that that movie in particular is is uh, that movie Eyes of My Mother which came out in 2016 that movie is definitely one of the greatest, you know, modern day horror films. A movie that I don't really hear talked about very much. And I think it's one of the greatest, greatest horror movies. It's one of the most disturbing films. It's essentially about a serial killer. But it's, it, it, that film was so tremendously influenced by William Castle. And the, the disc that I have, the Blu-ray of that film, has some really great special features. It has an awesome interview 
with Nicholas Pesk, who was the, the director of Eyes of My Mother. And he talked in depth about kind of his whole like process and what influenced him to make this film. And he talked extensively about William Castle. So I, I remember when I saw that movie, and that was a movie I think I took a chance and I bought it. I, I've had it for quite a few years. But I remember buying it probably about five years ago. I bought it on Blu-ray without having seen it. And I had heard it look, that it was really great. It had some really great reviews and some really great uh, uh, critical acclaim from different critics. And I remember buying it just kind of on a whim. And I was, you know, and it's one of my favorites. It's, it's kind of a masterpiece. But again, I don't feel like that movie's ever talked about. It should be. Uh, it's one of the best. It's one of the best... Even though it came out now in 2016, so it's a few years old, it's, uh, I think it's one of the best, you know, quote-unquote modern-day horror films. Totally, you know, it's got this very old-school atmosphere and uh, aesthetic. And so the whole thing was greatly influenced by William Castle. It's also in black and white. So, yeah, super fun. And I just posted a, a video or review, a re video review of the eyes of my mother so definitely check that out it's uh you know i would definitely say it would be in my top 20 list of some of the best horror films that, that have ever been made especially if you're talking about in the more modern era easily so today's show is on a movie that i I have a little bit of a, well, a little bit of a funny history with. I never, had never seen it before. I kept, I kept hearing about this movie. Well, actually, no, I, I, I kept seeing it in the stores. And again, like I talk a lot about my shopping habits on this channel, where I go and kind of my whole weird process and I always talk about my process of where when I go to Bull Moose I uh, really really try to focus on buying all of these crazy exportation movies I try to look you know I look up things online there's a couple of really great YouTube guys that I really love one guy who is my favorite is a guy from Canada, Mood 616. Tremendous guy. Tremendous YouTube guy. A deep, vast knowledge of all things exploitation. He covers all kinds of things, but super cool. And I have gotten so many great titles thanks to a lot of his reviews. I have, uh, you know, really been brought back to a lot of films through his channel that I grew up watching one of the biggest for me was or is Lucio Fulci a director one of my probably my well, my favorite Italian exploitation director movies I grew up watching a lot a lot lots of his films I grew up watching and also Jess Franco is another discovery that I I got through his channel Again, a really high, highly prolific exploitation director from, from uh, Spain. Probably the biggest, and well, at least in my travels as far as being a film nerd, probably the most prolific director that I've come across. Like, it's insane. Even not just in the exploitation world, but just in general. I've always felt like one of my favorite directors who I will eventually get into doing uh, some shows on and I haven't done any of any of his films and not he's obviously not an exploitation director but one of my my favorite Japanese director of all time is Akira Kurosawa. I have a pretty good amount of his films on Blu-ray and DVD but he's one of my favorites. He to me he's a god. But one of the things with him is he was so incredib incredibly prolific. So many movies. 
staggering. And I've always felt like he 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 was probably, you know, again from in my travels, the director that had the biggest discography that I that I've come across. I mean, almost ninety to eighty movies. A lot of his films. I've seen most of them, but there's there's still a handful I haven't gotten to yet. But when I discovered Jess Franco, and again, it was one of those things of, of a rediscovery, there were a lot of his films, and he's definitely, uh, you know, fully immersed, a full-on exploitation director, made lots of giallo films, and he also made lots of horror films, really sleazy films, uh, really, and also most of his, a lot of his films are pretty disturbing. But, and there were a handful of his films that I, I grew up watching. One in particular that I was always enamored with was a film that I did a review on called Facelift, which has such an awesome horror movie. Really disturbing and just amazing and super gory. And so, you know, discovering that, rediscovering that film thanks to that YouTube channel, uh, thanks to Moods 616. I uh, I started diving deep into the Jess Franco world, and I realized, wow, like he's got over a hundred films. I mean, and there's still so many movies of his that were kind of, you know, thrown not thrown away, but just kind of buried. And it seems like every few months there's another Jess Franco movie that comes out, and he's definitely the biggest, uh, the most prolific director, just. In, in the world that I've come across as far as the sheer amount of movies that he came out with. Sometimes two or three movies a year. And I and granted, it's exploitation and it's very different. It's, you know, much... He had a, a much smaller budget, but just the the level of films that he pump, uh, pumped out is just staggering. And another guy I just recently discovered who does uh, extensive coverage of Grindhouse films, exploitation films, and the main focus of his channel is horror. Is this guy called Maniac? Really great, and I'm really been, I've been digging his channel. He focuses a lot on slasher films, which are my favorite. Uh, that's my favorite style. So very cool. But in my travels, you know, I through learning about a lot of these films online, movies that I've seen when I you know movies that I saw when I was a kid, and then rediscovering, taking chances, and seeing all these other films, it's been, uh, you know, just uh, an amazing time for discovery. And I always go to Bull Moose, usually, most of the time I go to the Bull Moose in, in Waterville, Maine. That's my favorite place. And I always, so whenever I go there, I try to always focus on buying exploitation movies because they have such an amazing selection. And then when I go to... If I go to... My other favorite shop to go to is the Goodwill in Rockland. When I go there, I... They have a really good Blu-ray selection. I bought a, a shit ton of Blu-rays there. They have, you know, more of the bigger budget Hollywood films. So I've gotten a shit ton of those kinds of films there. So I try to separate the two. And... uh for the last year or so, I've been, you know, I've been going, I've been going a little bit more, more often to Bull Moose, and I, for the last few months or so, five months, I have kept, I kept coming across this one film, and for whatever reason, I didn't buy it. I just was like, wow, this looks really cool. This looks pretty sleazy and and pretty graphic, but I ended up buying, you know, other movies, and that is this movie. Gore in Venice. And I again, it's one of those funny things. I kept seeing this movie in the stores for months. And, you know, but I, for whatever reasons, for whatever reason, I would always pass on it and I ended up buying other films. And it kept popping up. I kept seeing it. And even, even when I have gone to other Bull Moose locations, like down in Portland, the other Bull Moose I really love a lot is the Bull Moose in Brunswick, Maine. That's a really great place. That's probably my one of my favorite shops also. They have a really great exploitation, uh, horror, horror exploitation uh, selection. 
I've gotten some really great movies there. And I kept, so again, I kept seeing this movie over and over again in the shop. And then the, my last time, the last time I was at Bull Moose, which was a, a few weeks ago, I saw this movie again and I was just like, fuck it, I'm going to buy it. And I bought it. And, you know, and I've always read the, the back, you know, I whenever I pick out a movie, I've never seen this before. I had never heard of this movie online. It's never come up in any reviews that, that I can remember or anybody's lists as far as, you know, top movies. So I just, you know, the last time I saw it, when I bought it, I, I really, you know, I always check out what, you know, what the, you know, what the synopsis is and if the reviews are pretty good or, and another major selling point for me to buy a movie is if it has, you know, ton, a ton of special features. This unfortunately has absolutely zero special features on it and it's 11 bucks. But again, it was one of those movies I kept seeing. It just looked really intense. And I was just like, screw it. I'm, I'm going to buy it. And on the top of the of the back of the CD, of the of this Blu-ray, it says the controversial cult, cult classic, uncut and uncensored. And it basically says how this movie is just, you know, an unrelenting, sleazy murderous uh experience and you know and it it's pretty hyped on the back it's pretty hyped that this movie is like one of the most controversial movies ever made one of the most graphic exploitation movies ever made so i i threw some caution in the wind and i bought it and i watched this last night for the very first time and i was completely blown away by this movie You know, I have, I have a real high threshold for watching graphic things in film. A lot of things don't bother me. I mean, obviously, things that can that can bother other people, like as far as copious amounts of gore. I know a lots of lots of people who don't like, uh, you know, really violent movies. And especially if there are, you know, sexual situations thrown thrown in the mix, you know, along the lines of, you know, kind of rape scenarios. And I totally get that because, you know, seeing some of, the, of those scenes or storylines that have, th you know, things of that nature in it can be, you know, kind of traumatic and can really, you know, fuck with someone's head. And I get that, but you know, at the end of the day, they're they're just you know they're fictional movies, so you know. But I so I've always had a real high tolerance for extreme violence in film, and you know whether it's sexual or or whether it's like some you know uh, you know a completely over the top slasher scenario. I actually really love films that are really graphic and push those boundaries. I you know if there's still good stories and they're well shot. And there's like, like again, like I said, my biggest attraction to, to uh, the biggest factor for me uh, that makes me a fan of a, a movie is if the film has re uh, just a really intense atmosphere. So I I very much enjoy films that do have have those things. You know, as as long as the movie itself is really immersive. And I, you know, and again, I have seen. Lots of films that are incredibly disturbing, you know, films that I know uh, some friends of mine won't ever sit through because they're they're too uh, too intense, and I get that, and that's totally fine. And I so I have seen some very disturbing movies. I have a really high tolerance for films, but this movie I have to say might be the top of the list as far as the graphic nature of it. It is unbelievable and again i haven't even finished this movie i started i i came home last night it was funny because i was during the day i had a rehearsal here at my place at my studio and then i was supposed to have another practice another practice last night and i 
so I was supposed to have two practices, plus I was going to go to work. So my day was pretty busy, so I, you know, was, that was what was planned for my day. And then, you know, uh, this is a couple hours after I got done practicing in the morning, and then I was on my way to work, I got a text that the practice that I was supposed to have last night got canceled. So I ended up, there were there were two really cool music events last night that I had some friends that were involved with playing. So I was super excited to to be able to go to those. So I went to both music events last night, and it was super fun. I had a really great time. I didn't think I was going to be able to, to go to both, but I did. And it was super fun. I was glad I did it. But I got home on the later side. And I, you know, made some dinner and stuff. And by the time I settled in, it was about like 1130 at night. And I was like, oh, what do I, you know, you know, uh, I was like, I, my favorite thing to do every night is to usually unwind and decomp- decompress by throwing in a movie. And I came home and I was like, well, I'm not sure what I'm in the mood for. I mean, I was kept thinking about what do I want to watch? I want to watch something, but what am I, what am I in the mood for? And I bought, I went to Blue Moose a few uh, about two weeks ago, and I bought, a, you know, a bunch of new movies, and there were a few I haven't watched yet. I like to try to space out when I watch certain films, so I, it can build up a little bit of anticipation, and I have something to look forward to. And I realized, oh wait, there's a few movies I bought that I haven't seen yet. And I came home, had some dinner, and I had a little bit of tea to kind of wake me up a little bit. And then I was like, oh wait, Gore. Gordon Venice, I, I'm gonna watch this thing, and I so I threw it in last night. I started watching it pretty late. I didn't make it all the way through, but I'm gonna finish it up uh, tonight. I watched most of it, and I have to say, I was sitting on my couch, and my and I was at one point I was pretty tired. I was almost kind of dozing off, and then there were a few things that happened in this film where my jaw dropped, like totally fucking dropped, and I could not fucking believe what I was seeing. Uh, this movie is definitely, and I've seen some really, I own, and I've seen some films that are incredibly sleazy and as low budget as, as, as something can be and as graphic as, as something can be. And I have to say that this movie is probably the sleaziest movie I've ever seen. And that's saying a lot, I guess. And it's got this one scene in it that is so violent and disturbing that I just I couldn't believe what I was seeing literally I was just like I was sitting on my couch and when this scene I don't want to give it away not that people are going to be jumping out of their seats to see this movie they should but there was one scene in that was so violent and so graphic that I just I could not fucking believe it my jaw dropped and I'm like I can't believe this was like captured on film Disturbing. I mean, one of the most graphic, probably the most dis- graphic kill I've ever seen uh, in a movie. And again, I haven't finished this yet, so I'm looking forward to finishing it again. But I was just like, I literally jumped out of my seat. And again, it takes a lot for me to get, you know, for me to physically react to something where I'm just like, oh my fucking God, you know. That was the experience I had with this. And this movie is so fucking sleazy. It's like, it's unbelievable. It's got full frontal nudity. It's outrageous. It's totally outrageous. But again, it's a it's actually a really well done movie. And this movie came out in 1979. It was directed by Mario Lendi. And it's a uh, an Italian movie. And it's... It's kind of considered a giallo horror film. It was released in 1979 in Italy and starred Leonardo Fini. It's known primarily for its extremely graphic scenes of sex and gore, including a woman's leg being slowly sawed off by a long knife. I haven't gotten to that scene yet. Uh... But the thing that's so 
beautiful about this movie, even though it's not beautiful at all, in, in, you know, at all in a lot of ways because it's just so graphic. It's all shot in Venice, Italy, and so the the cinematography and the way it's shot and just the the locations and the location is breathtaking. And the music for this film is is just unbelievable. And there's a this crazy like juxtaposition of where there there are these really disturbing things happening on screen and there's kind of this the music is like this really bright upbeat kind of jazz based music and it's it's weird and hilarious and disturbing but the locations are breathtaking i mean it's it's all shot in venice uh, but this movie i swear is it it's a it's a murder mystery it's about it's about these uh well, basically, there's from what I gather of this movie, and again, I just saw it. I still have to finish it. There are these. Uh, there's a series of these murders that are taking place in Venice. These graphic murders. That's essentially, and that component of it, I feel like, is definitely like a slasher element. But then there's like this investigative thing that the police are, the police are, you know, hot on the trail trying to find the killer, and there's all these twists and turns. And it has this kind of murder mystery vibe to it, which gives it that giallo feel. It's very much a giallo film. It's probably more a giallo film than anything because of those uh, uh, characteristics. And it's also centered on this couple that's living in Venice that is tied in with the story. And literally every scene that they're in, they're having uh, just completely inappropriate sex, like wherever they go in public... Um, you know, and they're also really into uh, bondage and and uh, all kinds of nasty things. So, like every every time you see this couple who is part of the story, all they all they do is basically have sex. Whether they go to the uh, they go out for dinner, or they they go for a walk, or they're like sex maniacs. And they go to the movies. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's totally crazy. And it's it's definitely the most sleazy. It's definitely the sleaziest movie that I've ever seen. Uh, and the violence in this movie is like unbelievable, unbelievable. It doesn't have like a ton. At least I haven't. Again, I haven't finished this movie yet. So there's probably some more things coming my way, which I'm like, holy shit, can I take that? But the violence that is in this movie is is beyond shocking it's it's jaw dropping and this is a movie so again never i never seen it before and uh i i you know it's as as fucked up as this movie is i have to say that this movie is incredible like it's just unbelievable it's like i'm kind of blown away by that this movie even got made i mean it's it's unbelievable this movie, like this, this kind of a film, like a, a film at this level, that's so low budget and so graphic and sleazy, I don't think could be made today at all because of what they show. Uh, I mean, it's unbelievable. There's no way. There's no way in hell that something like this could be made today. And this was made in '79. I mean, it's you. I mean, you. You look at you know any film that comes out now, whether it's a low budget film or a big budget film. And, and, you know, sometimes people will criticize it or they'll, or it will, or it will also help sell tickets. You know, people will say, well, so many of the movies that come out nowadays, there's, you know, it's all about sex and violence and blah, blah, blah. And they'll, they'll say like, you know, it's so the, the violence or the gore or the sexual component of that film is so, you know, over the top and just so graphic. And it, it's also this thing of where people will say, well, they're using that kind of thing to sell the product, you know. there's And I and I get that. Like, there is a show, a TV show I watched recently, um, which I can't remember the name of it, but literally every scene, it's a newer kind of crime show, and literally every scene was the main characters they're they're basically having sex constantly and it's pretty graphic but after a while like i started hating the show because it was just that's all it was and it was just the same old shit every every scene and you know 
and is the argument, and I also believe it too, that a lot of there's a lot of great movies that are coming out, and there's a lot of great television shows, but there's also a thing of where I feel where a film or a television show lacks in the actual writing department, they will sometimes overcompensate to try to make it, you know, really, really dark and really realistic and really turn up the sexual things and the violence to to try to sell it. And that's a thing. And that's always been a thing. But I think to a degree for television, especially now because everything is so dark and like everything is like made to be so serious and gritty and but I think that is used as an overcompensation because at for at times for the lack of really great writing, you know. I love films that are really, really dark. I, I mean, look at all the movies, you know, look at all the reviews on this show. It's all comprised of darker horror films. But the story is good. The story is 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 bedrock. It's the the stories are really fleshed out. Great characters. It's not those elements are not used to, uh, you know, to kind of cover their tracks. And so, you know, a lot of television shows, a lot of movies do have that. And then you also have people who criticize it saying, well, it's too graphic and blah, 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 and all these things. And then when I watch this fucking movie, Gore in Venice, I'm just like, this movie is like on another, at a whole another, it's from another planet. And when and it comes to the graphic nature of what you see as a viewer, like, like this, this is like, and this came out in 79. It's hard to believe. It's like, you know, almost 50 years old. And it's like no comparison to anything as far as those uh, content dealing with violence or sex, sexuality. I mean, this movie is like shocking, completely shocking. But at the same time, it's beautifully shot. The direction's really great. The story's actually really interesting. I love how it's a murder mystery you know, with a slasher element, and it has, and it's definitely a sex exploitation movie, and that it's beautifully shot, and the locations are just amazing. Um, but just wow, what a movie! What a freaking movie! What a discovery! I, you know, so excited about this movie, even though that being said, it's, I, you know, like I said in the top of the show, it's. I have to say it's probably the most it's the nastiest movie I've ever seen. So this is Jason Dean. If you're in for some uh, gut-wrenching violence and sexuality like unlike anything you've ever seen, Gore in, Gore in Venice, 1979. This Italian trashy movie is like off the charts. Please check it out if you get a chance. Uh it's it's amazing. So this is Jason Dean. Thanks again for every to everyone with their support and all these great things. I really uh, really appreciate all the love that people have been you know showing this channel and uh, and, and a lot of the new folks uh, who have been subscribing to this channel have been commenting. So thanks again, and we will see you next time. Peace.